we are going to be breaking down Riot's Arcane series, the first three episodes, from an artist's perspective. If you're interested in being a digital artist and would like to learn more, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss any of the videos such as this one. My name's Rexel. I'm a professional concept artist and illustrator. I've played both uh, Valorant and League of Legends, so I have a fair idea of um, Riot's art style and their art direction. Big disclaimer, I'm gonna talk about lots of spoiler-heavy content, so watch out for that. First, we're gonna talk about um, this scene in particular, where um, they reveal the look of Piltover and like the overall setting of like the story. It, this is such a beautiful image and you can see that they have lots of influences and namely, you know, steampunk. And this really reminds me of Dishonored, which is kind of born in the same genre, uh, which is steampunk. And you can tell that they have the same influences such as Victorian architecture, you can see that there's like lots of trim here, the gold and bronze trim, um, lots of pipes that kind of shows that the technology here is relatively mundane or low energy. It's not super advanced yet and they've built uh, an advanced civilization from that. And this also kind of reminds me of Santorini in Greece. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right because of the really like bright and white walls in the blue roofs and overall it just shows a really high class and advanced society this one's the night scene where we kind of see built over in a different light let's compare the two images so this one's really bright and like everything's friendly but after like um the escape we can we see Piltover as a di in a different light where um, it's actually the enemy or like the characters or the protagonists in this story is actually um, against Piltover instead of um, here we don't uh, we see it as a friendly and welcoming place here we see it as the villain almost where um, we empathize with the protagonist and we see Piltover as the enemy. You can also see the colors. So here we can see um, there's a tint of green um, that can be like because of like many different reasons. What I would like to point out is this particular part is green and green green light is actually the most unnatural light. And that's there's a reason why green light is used for like alien films and like um everything that we are trying to show as supernatural because um you don't really see green light um in the natural world that's why it's so foreign and what this shot is representing it's kind of alienating this part from the characters compared to this one where they're all they're all colorful and um makes it look like they belong in this place but as you can see here they really don't um the origins of cyberpunk um as a genre you know this came from fiction novels where it talks about the juxtaposition between the high class and like the lower class it's kind of like a class struggle and steampunk and cyberpunk really highlights that gap or like the difference between the two and how they struggle how they both struggle for power and um, other than you know the clear design influence we can also like clearly see the influence in terms of plot and storytelling and the writing so this is obviously some sort of class struggle and um, the steampunk design and writing um, verifies that. This one, uh, I don't know, I just really like it. It's just, it's just so good. And there's 
this big um, mountain on the right and um, they've used like this composition compositional technique where they use the cloud to kind of guide our eyes here you know they could have um, made the mountain you know continue it up here and add some trees over here you know but they didn't and what they did then was just use a cloud to mask out this entire place that way the silhouette of this character we don't really know who this is um stands out and since he's on a like rule of thirds kind of uh place um that also reinforces that um the viewer should look here and not anywhere else so you're not supposed to look at here not here uh maybe this would be the secondary focal point but either way you know um, it just pulls you in into this very narrow spot in the image real quick what was your favorite scene in arcane let me know down in the comments now let's go back to this breakdown and we're gonna talk about um patterns and symmetry you can also see that here in the architecture where uh, here in the last drop you know there's not much symmetry going on so you can kind of see this shape right and this shape so this this circle one i think it's the only symmetrical thing but you know this shape is offset to to the right that's not really mirrored in any way or shape or form and i think that just reinforces that these two are really distinct places where the built over high class city have this you know symmetrical thing going on which which i can show here um where you can see there's this clear line going down and everything that's on the right is balanced with what's on the left other than that it, they use light you know they they use gold and they use repeating patterns to reinforce that this is a different place from the undercity so you can see there's lots of architectural elements that repeats itself but if we go back to the last drop there's nothing of the sort so everything is kind of placed randomly you know we don't see any sort of pattern and they didn't really plan this ahead while for the places in piltover they kind of it shows the opposite of that i also want to talk about this one so we see this person silco and silco kind of stands out and the place where he's in kind of stands out as somewhere in the middle where we can still see that you know there's still lots of asymmetry going on but we can see that there's repeating elements and even though it's not completely symmetrical we can kind of see there's symmetry at least a, a hint of symmetry going on you can you can also take a look at um, what silco is wearing and you can definitely tell that this person or this place is at a slightly higher class of slightly higher taste you know a bit more sophisticated compared to the people we see in the last drop and i think that's a really interesting um way of kind of showing that silco isn't one of the people on the last drop isn't um with vander but um he's still from the undercity but he's not allies with vander which i think is a really cool way of um showing it here now this one can we just talk about this one this one was a really good scene a really good um build up to this shot in particular and we see the hint of red if you're into league it's kind of like the actual eye color of jinx in the game where she's like a, a crazy maniac but here we only see a tiny hint of it like kind of foreshadowing what she'll become uh, in the coming episodes and her joining with with the villain's team you know which is also in red kind of highlights the fact that this is going to be her villain arc we're gonna see that kind of tension between her and vi in the coming episodes this is a, a really good shot and 
really moving one as well. So that's it for today's video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. And let me know your thoughts down here in the comment section. And thanks for watching. Yeah, I, I really like this thing, you know. Uh, this definitely happened in like episode 2 where she says like these riffs are too wild to contain which refers to Riot's popular mobile game Wild Rift. <laughs>